Our next speaker, Dr. Yasser Farhad from UAE, will delve into asymptomatic, non-obstructing caliceal stones controversies. Over to you, sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me today. Without further delay, uh, I'm talking about the asymptomatic, uh, non-obstructing caliceal stone. And actually, to, to understand the magnitude of the problem, we have almost 8% of population having uh, asymptomatic caliceal stones. Most of them are in the lower calyx, and size is average about five millimeter. And this becomes more frequent nowadays because we are using the cross-sectional imaging ultrasound in our clinics or referred from any family medicine with routine checkup for the patient. So incidental discovery of these asymptomatic stones becomes more and more. And this percent could be increased or doubled or tripled if we consider those patients after active stone management with residual fragments. So the dilemma is how to treat or not to treat. Is it a surgeon decision or a patient uh, a choice? So each option has its evidence of support, if favoring to treat, to, to, to avoid this stone can be symptomatic at one day or can induce more complication. Those again is to, to treat that most of the stones can stay silent for many years without inducing any uh, symptoms and keep this uh, intervention to once the patient is uh, symptomatic. Actually, in this short time, I will show some data or in one side of conservative treatment or not to treat the patient with a stone, uh, uh, caliceal uh, stones. So we can see in this larger study about, although it's retrospective, including 300 patients and follow up for three years, only 25% required intervention. So you have 75% of those patients with caliceal asymptomatic stone not to be treated. Here another study showing the 110 patients with a follow-up for three years as well, and only 19% of patients that require the active intervention. Many studies as well showing maybe less results, 11% and 7% that needs active intervention. And consider that there are some percent of those patients have uh, about 20% of spontaneous stone passage. So they, they can be cleared without intervention. And even in the short term follow up in the two years in, in this study in, in Journal of Urology, none has been required any active intervention. On the opposite side, if you want to treat, we have the rationale that the lower caliceal stone is difficult to be spontaneously passed. It, there is a chance to grow. There is a chance to induce more symptoms, especially if you have a geriatric patient or critically ill patient with multiple comorbidity, needs a further regular follow-up of the patient. And this is the rationale of why to treat. So when we treat, we have to consider in our mind that this is asymptomatic patient, and we may convert a percent of them into a symptomatic if they develop uh, uh, residual fragments, because none of our techniques have 100% stone free rate, it, it can be 10% still patient with residual fragments. So you converted asymptomatic patient into symptomatic patient with residual fragments. In addition to the complication, if you compare here shockwave and URS, they have a percent of complication that can induce to the patient. Comparing again to the PCNL and shockwave, looking to the scarring that happened, and we can see high the percent of tissue scarring that happened with shockwave. It's less with PCNL, but still we are exposing patients with asymptomatic stones to some degree of complication. This look here to the guidelines of European guidelines that observation is a recommend, recommendation endorsed by the European Urological Association for asymptomatic caliceal stones and the treatment be reserved for symptomatic events. Actually, in my institute, in our region, we adapt the same guidelines of the European that we advocate for initial observation with delayed treatment until there is an indication. This end up to reduce the, uh, 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 the risk of the patient and sometimes reducing the unnecessary invasive procedure. So this is what we usually adapt for our patients. Uh, I'd like before leaving the stage to invite all of you to keep in mind the Urological Association of Asia annual conference that will be in Bali in September 2024. Also, the Arab Association of Urology annual conference will be joined with the World Video Urology conference that will be in uh, Doha, Qatar in uh, November 2024. And again, I'd like to thank all of you for inviting me today. Thank you.